From Pacifica, this is Democracy Now! I am convinced that there is no shortcut to the end of a conflict that has endured for decades. Peace is hard work. Peace will not come through statements and resolutions at the United Nations. So I would hope that the U.S. would revisit its position because uh, if we want to seek a Middle East that's democratic, free, uh, void of uh, extremists and so on, we cannot maintain the status quo. Today, Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas will submit a statehood request to the United Nations Security Council. The U.S. has vowed to veto the move. Will host a debate between Palestinians? Is the statehood bid at the U.N. the answer? Then Pulitzer Prize-winning author Ron Suskind on his explosive new book, Confidence Men, Wall Street, Washington, and the Education of a President. The Obama team is fighting back. I live the original, and the reality I lived, we all live together, bears no relation to the sad little stories I heard reported from that book. All that and more coming up. Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. New fighting has erupted in Yemen following the surprise return of embattled President Ali Abdullah Saleh. Saleh had been in Saudi Arabia since June, receiving medical treatment following an assassination attempt. A major rally is being held in the Yemeni capital of Sana'a today in the protest of his return. Violence had already seen a resurgence in Yemen this week, with nearly 100 people killed since Sunday. Monday. The U.S. is accusing Pakistan's spy agency of playing a direct role in aiding the militants who attacked the U.S. Embassy in Kabul last week. The chair of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Admiral Mike Mullen, made the charge in Senate testimony. The Akani Network, for one, acts as a veritable arm of Pakistan's Internal Services Intelligence Agency. With ISI support, Makani operatives planned and conducted that truck bomb attack, as well as the assault on our embassy. We also have credible intelligence that they were behind the June 28th attack on the Intercontinental Hotel in Kabul and a host of other smaller but effective operations. In choosing to use violent extremism as an instrument of policy, the government of Pakistan, and most especially the Pakistani Army and ISI, jeopardizes not only the prospect of our strategic partnership, but Pakistan's opportunity to be a respected nation with legitimate regional influence. Mullen's comments were the first to directly link the Pakistani government with an attack on the U.S. and mark the most serious allegation leveled from Washington against Pakistan after more than a decade of cooperation following the 9-11 attacks. Interior Minister Raymond Malik denied Mullen's charge. No, of course, uh, the Pakistan uh, uh, nation and uh, we will not allow the boots on our ground. Our forces are quite capable of handling these terrorists, and the world has witnessed the way our army had taken action in Swat and Malakant. If you say that it is ISI involved in that attack, I categorically deny. I categorically deny we have no any such policy to attack or to aid attack through Pakistani forces or through any Pakistani assessment. The Palestinian Authority is expected to officially submit its request for statehood recognition at the United Nations today in defiance of U.S. and Israeli threats. The Obama administration's lobbied against the move, and U.S. lawmakers have threatened to cut off funding. Palestinian officials Saab Arakat and Nabil Shath said U.S. insistence on dead-end negotiations has forced the PA to take its bid before the U.N. Mr. Netanyahu's maneuvers are public relations. So, enough to say, come and meet and let's talk and let's negotiate over what? You have to say it. Mr. Netanyahu has to say it. I accept to stop all settlement activities as my obligation, and I accept the two states of 1967. And we don't see any contradiction at that moment between resuming negotiations and seeking Palestinian admittance in the UN. Friday will be a, a day of jubilation in Palestine. The President Abbas will give his speech. He will send his uh, request for membership to the Security Council, and he will leave that evening. And so uh, it, it's a happy day. We'll have a debate on Palestinian statehood after headlines. 
Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad prompted a walkout of U.S. and other Western delegations during a speech Thursday before the U.N. General Assembly. In his remarks, the Iranian president criticized U.S. foreign policy and called for reforming the U.N. Security Council to reduce Western dominance. For the third straight year, Ahmadinejad sent delegates to the exits after questioning the Nazi Holocaust and suggesting the U.S. was behind the 9-11 attacks. با استفاده از شبکه استعماری رسانه‌ای در برابر سوال از هولوکاست By using their imperialistic media network, which is under the influence of colonialism, they threaten anyone who questions the Holocaust and the September 11th event with sanctions and military action. who used the mysterious September 11th incident as a pretext to attack Afghanistan and Iraq, killing, injuring and displacing millions in two countries with the ultimate goal of bringing into its domination the Middle East and its oil resources. Republican presidential candidates squared off in Orlando, Florida Thursday in their latest televised debate. Former Massachusetts Governor Mitt Romney took aim at President Obama, linking him to European Socialist Democrats. Let me tell you this. What, what President, President Obama is is a big-spending liberal, and he takes his political inspiration from Europe and from the Socialist Democrats in Europe. Guess what? Europe isn't working in Europe. It's not going to work here. I believe in America. I believe in the opportunity and in the freedom that is American opportunity and freedom. I believe in free enterprise and capitalism. Washington is facing another potential government shutdown in a new partisan dispute over federal spending. The Republican-controlled House has approved a short-term funding measure that would link disaster relief to cutting funds for energy-efficient cars. Senate Democrats have vowed to reject the bill. If the dispute is not resolved, the Federal Emergency Management Agency's Disaster Relief Fund will run out of money next week, and the entire government would have to shut down on October 1st. Two police officers in Southern California have been charged in the beating death of a mentally ill homeless man. Over the course of nearly 10 minutes, the victim, 37-year-old Kelly Thomas, was tackled, hit with a baton, pinned down, punched repeatedly in the ribs, kneed in the head, tasered four times, then struck in the face with the taser itself eight times. Prosecutors say the officers continued the assault even after Thomas stopped struggling and a pool of blood formed around him. Officer Manuel Ramos has been charged with second-degree murder and involuntary manslaughter and could face life in prison. A second officer, Jay Ciccinelli, was charged with involuntary manslaughter and using excessive force. He faces a maximum sentence of four years. The remaining four officers involved in the killing have not been charged. Teachers in Tacoma, Washington, have voted to ratify an agreement ending a 10-day strike. Teachers had remained off the job throughout the week in defiance of a back-to-work order from the governor. The new pact rules out state proposed salary cuts and contains a compromise on job security. Tacoma schools are reopening today. A new study reveals the number of children living in poverty in the United States has climbed to 15.7 million, an increase of 2.6 million since the beginning of the recession in 2007. According to researchers from the Carsey Institute at the University of New Hampshire, nearly one in four children under the age of six now live in poverty. Drug violence is spreading to new areas of Mexico. Earlier this week, 35 corpses were dumped on a street in the port city of Veracruz, which had previously been considered a haven from the cartel wars that have killed over 40,000 people since 2006. The bodies, which included 12 women and two minors, were dumped semi-nude and bound during rush hour. A U.S. district court has begun hearing arguments in a case with major implications for the government's secret tracking of cell phones. Daniel David Rigmaiden, who faces fraud charges, wants the government to disclose its use of stingrays, a device used to track mobile phones even when they're not being used to make a phone call. Rigmaiden's attorneys say the stingrays have violated constitutional protections against unreasonable search and seizure.
Over 1,000 people gathered in New York City yesterday for a so-called day of outrage to commemorate the execution of death row prisoner Troy Davis. Organized through Facebook, the rally began at Union Square, where demonstrators denounced the perceived failures of the justice system. Lee Wengraff is a board member with the Campaign to End the Death Penalty. The struggle for Troy Davis has not just struck a chord, it has taken the lid off of the outrage that people feel about the depths of racism um, that, 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 that surrounds the death penalty, the prison system, all the criminal justice, police brutality. And I think it's that kind of energy and outrage that has, that, that, that has kept Troy Davis, first of all, that kept him alive as long as it did and, and brought us uh, uh, so, so, so close to potentially uh, uh, a winningness that Troy Troy Davis was uh, uh, someone that the whole world was watching over these past few days, and because of the way that people raised their voices and, uh, and shouted out and said, this must not stand, this is a legal lynching. The rally gave way to an impromptu march through the streets of Manhattan, gaining numbers along the way. The police responded with a heavy hand, lashing out at members of the press and arresting a number of people. The crowd eventually made its way to Zuccotti Park otherwise known as Liberty Plaza, where hundreds have gathered over the last week as part of the Occupy Wall Street campaign. The combined demonstration marched to Wall Street, where another arrest was made. In the process, police officers pulled a young woman who was taking photographs over a barricade and threw her to the ground, where her head struck the concrete. And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. And I'm Juan Gonzalez. Welcome to all of our listeners and viewers around the country and around the world.